Today's question is from a mama in Cairns about her four-year-old who doesn't listen and actually does the opposite of what she says. Hey everyone, welcome back to Tea Time Q&A. Do you have your cuppa ready? I've got mine. If you're new here, in this segment, I answer a question from you. So don't forget to sit, hit that subscribe button to stick around. So for today's question, dear Ange, my nearly four-year-old does not listen. Or more accurately, she listens, but does not, but chooses not to do as she's asked or actively does the opposite. For example, don't lick the baby's face, come sit at the table, come get your hair brushed. I'm aware this is normal toddler behavior, but I am wondering if there's anything I can do to make this stage less frustrating. I know the feeling and you are absolutely right. It is normal toddler behavior. And there are definitely some things that we can do to make this stage a lot less frustrating. So like with any struggle, the first place we wanna look is what's actually going on underneath the surface, rather than just dealing with what's on top. For a four-year-old not listening, there could be a number of different things that are going on. But one of the most common at this stage is that your four-year-old is asserting power and control over their lives. It's a natural inbuilt urge and it needs to be fulfilled. So if you could imagine a bucket and every single time you tell them what to do or tell them not to do something or make decisions for them in their lives, it actually takes away from their power bucket and creates feelings of being pushed and pulled, restricted, dominated, controlled. Whenever your little one has a say in what happens to them, has autonomy over tasks and has power over their lives, this actually fills their bucket and creates feelings of being secure, capable, free and good enough. It is perfectly healthy for you to give your little one age appropriate power over their lives. So how do we do this? The answer will be different depending on each individual child and family's needs. And in the Taming Tantrum workshops, together, we actually create specific strategies for you. But generally speaking, here's one thing you can do. Stop telling them what to do. What? 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 Relax, relax, relax. There are plenty of other ways that you can communicate with your child that will actually have them listen to you. And just remember that telling them what to do didn't have them listen to you anyway, which is why I'm answering this question. So replace telling them what to do with either a question or a statement or a combination of both. For example, instead of saying, come sit at the table, say, it's dinner time and walk away. Instead of saying, don't lick the baby's face, say, did you know there are billions of germs in our mouth? Do you know what color they are? And engage in a conversation. Instead of saying, wipe up the spill, you could say, the cloth. Just there, see the orange one? Right there on the table. See the orange one? Right yeah. Instead of saying, finish all your food, you could say, it looks like you're not hungry anymore. Instead of saying, put your bag away, say, does that bag belong there on the floor? And if your little one is cheeky like mine and says yes, then you could say, nice try, and walk away. This technique will shift some of those power struggles that you're having and have your little one feel in control of their lives. Thank you, Mama from Cairns, for this question. If you have any follow-up questions, definitely send that through to me. And don't forget to update me. I really wanna hear how you're going. For everyone else, send your questions through here. And thank you all for watching, bye.